winter wader id so i think the idea of this piece we're, we've taken a few um of the more common waders you're likely to see during the winter and we've tried to get some pictures of them in, in winter plumage and then we're going to sort of point out some of the id features so um this is the first one and this is of course a dunlin and how do we know it's a dunlin steve mm. I mean, I've got a broken my throat because I've been laughing. So, yeah, so it's got sort of a medium length bill. Um, it's quite small. Hopefully, Matt, in a few seconds, will uh, <laughs> go and film it. There we go. Yeah. So hey. for anyone that's, that, that has a mobile phone, if, if you want to, um, more than welcome, take a picture of this screen because we tried to put some ID pointers on the screen. This one's a little bit tricky to read because of the colours. The others are all OK. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Go on, Steve. Carry on. Yeah, as Matt said, or oh, sorry, if you said earlier, yeah, so it's got a sort of a, a medium length bill, um, slightly curved. They do vary in length just to do with the different races. So some of the northern race birds have longer bills. Um, yeah, but yeah, Matt, yeah, Matt's got a marks up on here. Yeah, has doesn't really have much of a supercilium, very sort of weak, uh, weak sort of supercilium. And it's quite a brown, brownie, more plumage than some of the other waders. And really nice, the winter plumage. Lovely white belly underneath. Some of the juveniles have a few specks on still at this time of year. Um, but yeah, it's a common wade around the coast um, at the moment. And uh, yeah, but hopefully we've got some other species to compare this with. So this is done in flights. And um, for those eagle-eyed amongst you, you might spot a different species in the flock, which we're going to be covering later on. But if we have a quick, a closer look at the, the Dunlin in flight, so you can see um the birds they generally look brown brown and white really they, they're very twisty turny in, in the in the light so if the sunlight catches them you tend to see the white undersides really glistening as the flock moves up or up or down the the river or estuary um and so you're looking for the uh the the rump of the bird is kind of a brown center with white tail edges and that's quite prominent in flight if you if you um see the brown bird just looking for look for a rump because the other bird it could be as curlew sandpiper they have a white rump but Dunlin is a brown rump with white edges. You've got a very obvious brown head and neck on, on the white underside, um, brown upper parts with the, with the darker wedge on, on the wing um, with a fairly um, noticeable white wing bar as well. And as I mentioned, you've got white underwing, white belly. So it's very, very much brown and white on the ground and in flight. A lot of these waders, when you see them in the books, they're very, they all look very similar, but actually in the field, they're they're reasonably okay to identify, you know, as long as you get a good view. Mm. So this is a knot. Uh, so this is yeah, much chunkier bird, much yeah. It's all much more rugby ball shape. It's got that very sort of oval shape, um, and again, sort of quite a uh, short, thick, thickish bill. More of a prominent supercilium than the Dunlin, and it's got these plain can't even say it plain grey edges. Sort of to the uh, uh, white grey feathers with the white edges, just round sort of round here. Um, what else we've we got? So yeah, and also yeah, this one's obviously been feeding in very <laughs> thick mud, but they have got a sort of greenish greenishy legs. Um, sometimes they look a bit more grey, but uh, very much a sort of grey, you know, an off off black sort of colour legs. And they've got these little like, sort of chevrons on the breast and flanks. So where we saw Dunlin much more white and much more white underneath but uh not as much more sort of brayer and flecked underneath mm. lovely little bird that is nice um, well. again you've got a flight shot here as well interestingly a couple of these birds have got some uh some of the summer plumage left so they look very different in summer plumage we don't really see them in summer plumage in, in Essex, but um, you know, they're they're very quite a bright looking bird um in the summer. But uh, most of these, as you can see, are very much grey. They just look very grey um in, in flight, quite chunky, um, slightly closer look here. And you can see you've got the dark um wedge on the outer wing in flight, which is quite prominent. Barred rump. So uh, if you get a look at the, the tail end of the bird, from a distance it looks very pale. Um, but if you get a closer look, it's actually got small bars on it. And quite a thin white wing bar on knot as well. It's not quite as noticeable as on, as on some species. So grey bird, dark outer wings and a, and a pale, pale looking rump and just quite chunky. Um, shorter bill, a short sort of fairly, fairly thick bill. Again, is quite easily noticeable in flight. So that rugby ball shape is quite sort of, mm. and you can see, actually see it here with a comparison shot. So we've got some sort of Dunlin 
in the foreground and then we've got three or four knots sort of back back left yeah but they, they're quite different size i mean you can see the size difference between the two species here that's the thing and if you look at the knot just here and you've got the dunlin just to the left here very very different in size and shape as well so um when you see them next to each other it's, you, you think how could I ever get them mixed up but but sometimes you know it's, it's not quite as easy if there's just a solitary bird on its own uh, but certainly and, they're different yeah and you can see the color there as well the brown of the dunlin the gray of the knot yeah and actually you can see the second bird um from the left in the back there you can actually sort of make out it's sort of greeny greeny legs there yeah yeah which is yeah nice. so just quite useful just to get a shot of them all, all next to each other yeah lovely next up yeah, so we've got sandling next. So these tend to be much more bit birds found on sandy and rocky, well, we'll say rocky, sort of pebbly shores, especially sort of um, South End's a good place, sort of Shoebury, two tree, um, not Two Tree Island, what's it called? Gunners Park, sorry. And then up at the Nays and places like Frinton, really good for these. And these are a smart looking bird, but these are like very pale gray. Um, they're just almost ghostly more ghostly sort of color um again sort of short black bill and very white underneath and as matt's put on here if you have a good close look at its legs got black legs but this one has no rear toe so all the other waders have got like a hind toe um but this doesn't and they just look really cute really sort of lovely little bird and if you want watching them on the beach they're running up and down like clockwork toys mm. um so cracking cracking bird yeah, they tend to still go in and out of the surf as it comes in, doesn't it? You know, as, as the waves hit the hit the sea, uh, hit the beach, they're in and out of the, of the waves and and picking at food and and so on. Um, so once again, in flight, um, similar to not in terms of the coloration, so kind of grey looking, but very very white underneath. You've got a more prominent wing bar um, on a on a probably a blacker wing um, when when they're in flight. Obviously, a smaller bird. It's a Dunlin size, as we saw from the picture a few moments ago with the Dunlin flock. There was one sandling in with the Dunlin. And the shorter bill is noticeable. Um, and you've got a kind of a grey coloured rump with, with quite prominent white edges. So very pale looking head as well. I've noticed in flight that the head looks almost white when you get good light on the bird. So grey, black, black wings, white wing bar, very pale underneath, very white and very pale head. Yeah, nice. And then say so these all these are quite you know easy to find around the Essex coast. Um, mm. So then we move on to something a little bit bigger now. So we're now on to the the godwits. So this is a black tail godwit. So it's a sort of quite a largish wader. Um, but black tail godwits all in the winter are always very sort of plain plain grey uh, on the upper parts with that long pink and black straight bill. So it's almost straight out. Um, they just look very plain looking, but uh, if you're depends how big your writing is. So they say that if mm -hmm. you can write the word, so from its like its underbelly to its um, well, actually it's its ankle joint is this, but it looks like its knee. Yep. Um, if you can write the word black in there, it's a black tail godwit. So quite long, long tibia. Um, and then if it's short, and you can write the word bar in it, then it's going to be a bar tail godwit. Hmm. It depends how big your writing is, <laughs> whether you're writing capitals or lowercase <laughs> or various other things. So, <laughs> okay, so um, if we look at black tail goblets in flight, so in flight they are quite um, they're quite distinctive. To be fair, you've got a very very noticeable white wing bar, um, sort of black black white black wings, um, an extremely noticeable white rump with black tail. Of course, being a black tail goblet as we can see when we move a little bit closer. And the, the main thing you can see in flight really is the, the long bill and the legs that stick out from the back of the bird. So um, they stick out a long way that, you know, the, the, the complete foot is, is proud of the tail. So they really have a very sort of long extenuated look in, in flight. Um, they tend to fly closely together, Godwits. So uh, when you see a flock of, you know, pretty chunky sized waders and they're fairly closely packed, the chances are they're, they're going to be godwits, but they're very, very distinctive in flights. Underside, I um, haven't put any markers on here, but 
just pale, very pale looking, long wings, long legs, and you've just got that black trailing edge. So it's kind of a reverse of what you can see on the top. Uh, mm. But from under, from the underside, it is really the legs and the bill you're looking for, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, and I say that wing bar, you can mm. see even see the wing bar through the sort of on the underwing as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're lo lovely bird, and these these can be found all around the coast, and uh, it's well worth checking reservoirs. There's quite a few, certainly Hanningfield, Aberton, and a few other inland waters. If the water level is low, mm. then you'll find blacktail godwits. So they love this sort of freshwater habitat. Yep. As well. But this isn't a blacktail godwit. This is. It's a bartail godwits. Hey. So yeah. So this is. Um, these are slightly scarce around Essex than blacktail godwit. Um, but you can see it's got this lovely scalloped sort of tortoiseshell upper parts. Whereas on the blacktail godwit we just showed, very plain grey, a um, bit more of a supercilium, and it's got this long, um, long bill, and it's got a nice, slightly upturn to it. Um, but that does vary sometimes. In you know, sometimes you get some very nice, really upturned uh, bartail godwits, and again, it's got these short legs, the short tibia. So you again, <laughs> depends how big your writing is. But <laughs> yeah, if you can write the word bar in there, then it's a uh, um bartel godwit and these are um pretty much exclusively found coastal around mm. the essex coast they do turn up occasionally inland um especially on sort of migration migration times of year but uh well worth keeping an eye out and you certainly if you go to places like fingering ho um you can often see both species side by side misley as well isn't there matt misley is a good place yes yeah i mean you'll get the, the odd one turn up at misley and if you go just a bit further downriver to Ravness, um, that's quite good to see them. You can stand on the seawall there and quite often get uh, bar-tail goblets there as well. Um, this one, strangely, because it's so close, this this is one one of the two that turned up at Abbotson, I think, a couple of years ago. Do you remember? Um, I do so remember, got, yep. Got some nice views. And they're always nice when you see them somewhere that they shouldn't be, as, as with any bird, to be fair. Um, incidentally, before we carry on, uh, please, we're not advocating that somebody should try and catch a black-tailed or bar-tailed orbit and write it on their leg, of course. Um, no. which, <laughs> this is just something you can imagine doing while you're watching them through your binoculars or scope from the safe distance. Uh, right, OK. Shame, because I had my bar out ready, so that was my... <laughs> um, so bar tail goblets in flight, they look completely different to black tail goblets. So this is a kind of a distant shot. Um, we go a little bit closer. So you can still see that you've got the long bill, but even in flight, you can see it's slightly upturned. I think pretty much all of these birds have got like an upturn to the bill. But the main thing you'll notice is that um, the feet do not project from the tail. They're, they're pretty much level with the rear of the bird. Um, so you've got long bill, but no feet almost. Um, there's no white wing bar on, on the bar tail goblet. You've just got the white V extending up the back, as you can see on this bottom bird here. And of course, bar tail goblets, they have a barred tail rather than that black and white tail. So quite distinctive in flight. If you look for those features, hopefully you, you won't get them muddled up. But it, it's mainly the fact that the bird doesn't have the projecting feet. Yeah. But in, you can tell it's a godwit, but it's short, it looks shorter, doesn't it? It looks like it's yeah. cut off at the rear end almost. Yeah. And if you, yeah, I say a nice shot there in flight there, isn't there? So you can yeah. see that look of wing bar and and the underside there as well you know this is, this is a particularly good shot but very very pale looking and and no no feet sticking out they're all quite yeah. quite attenuated at the rear and we've got a comparison shot there haven't we well that's a cracking shot actually showing uh black tail godwit on the right so you can see how plain brown and how plain the upper parts are um and how long leg obviously the left hand bird which is the bar tail godwit is it is in different depth of water there but you can see how long legged the uh, black tail godwit is in comparison and again yeah. that sort of marbled marbled effect on the back bar tail godwit so yeah it's a really good really good comparison shot there matt mm. you've got obviously the supercilium on this particular bird is very noticeable and i think because the black tail is so long-legged it makes it look a bit more elegant almost whereas bar tail godwits look just a little bit dumpier for me when when they're on, when when you get good views of them because the legs yeah. are that much shorter no good call yeah definitely and then I think we I think these are our final two. So we've got uh, grey plover. Yes. So again, common species around the around the coast. Very thick bill, uh, in compared with our next species. 
Um, it's got this lovely sort of dark spot behind the eye, and it's all very spangly, sort of mottled grey. Um, very elegant bird, um, very large eye as well, um, which is quite typical of all the plovers. Um, pale underneath, as Matt's marked here, um, with this sort of spe sort of speckly, speckly streaked breast. Mm. And they tend to feed, com they feed completely different to the other way. There's all the plovers feed really slowly with a couple of steps and a peck, a couple of steps and a peck, whereas the, all the other waders tend to be a bit more frenetic. Mm. They, they kind of stop as well, don't they, before they peck? They, yeah. To me, they always look like they're kind of step, 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 stop, peck, stop, step, 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 stop. It's a very deliberate feeding action, isn't it? Yeah, and they obviously they're using their eyes to find the food rather than their, like the godwits will just stick their bill in the mud and, you know, it's bill will find the food where these uh, plovers are, um, and that goes for things like lapwing, ring plover, all the plovers, they've got this big eye that they, they've basically looking for food on the surface. So yeah, lovely, lovely bird that is. In flight, um, grey plovers, once again, it's a grey, it's a grey bird in flight. And this is the reason we've done this, because so many of these birds superficially, you can, you can watch them as they, you know, uh, either as they're flocking on the beach at distance or as they fly past you at speed. And you can think, they all look the same but they really they really don't if you if you just spend a moment to look for those key identification features so another gray bird in flight you've got the dark outer wing a, a white flash on the outer wing I'd, I'd say i'd describe it as more of a more than a, a sort of a complete wing bar um you can see the spangled back and and, and spangled um wing coverts in flight pale looking barred tail again uh, short dumpy bill is visible in flight and you you'll see the eye as well because the eye is so big as steve was saying but the main thing you're looking for is the black armpits or auxiliaries is, is the technical term. Um, and they're very, very prominent in flight. So as the bird's flying, it doesn't matter what, what angle you see it from, um, you are going to see those black armpits. So that's really what you're looking out for with grey plover. They look quite long winged in flight as well, um, you know, as a lot of plovers tend to do. Uh, but the black armpits are really what you're looking for in, in flight. I don't think any other birds have got those of that sort of size, have they? Nope. No, nothing as far as I'm uh, aware, Matt. No. no. So, so then we've got uh, our final species. So this is golden plover. So as, as is quite obvious for this bird, it's very much more golden. It's got that sort of warm golden brown spangled plumage. But in comparison with the grey plover, it's got a much thinner, thinner, more sharply pointed bill. Uh, and it's got the big eye, again, which it uses for feeding. Quite pale greyish legs. And you just, you, you've got, yeah, that's something we people overlook. It's got this like very gentle look to them. Mm. You know, it's lovely. Yeah, lovely bird. And I say that spangled plumage is is cracking. So even in poor light, you get that warm tone on them, um, which is just nice to see. Yeah, this particular bird, I think, is a young bird because you've got more barring on, on, the, on the flanks and, and underbelly here. Um, I think the adult winter birds would a very they're almost identical plumage, but they just wouldn't have quite as much barring underneath. Just um, a bit paler, paler on the belly and stuff on yeah. the young on the adult birds, yeah. Um, so as you as you can see here, the, this is a group of adult birds in, in winter plumage in flight, um, and very, very easy to to pick them out if you get some decent views because in flight in good light, they just look golden. They 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 really, really sort of shimmer they shine in the light they're absolutely stunning um they've got a fairly distinctive flight style once you're used to it you can pick them out and you've got very clear uh demarcation between the golden breast and the white underbelly on the adult birds very pale underwing uh very pale belly and once again you've got the dark prims with the with the white flash so the primary is probably similar to gray plover in a way Yep. but just with a much more golden plumage and a much clearer divide between the, the breast and, and the white underbelly. And obviously no black armpits, no black axillaries. They're, they're pure white. But yeah, just a really pale, pale bird. And I think that's it.